Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. Welcome to part two on how to tune your NEQ6 or EQ6 mounts. If you've not seen part one, please check out the link at the top. Please check that out. Again, if you've not seen part one, I suggest you go to part one and watch that video first. Basically that covers a lot of uh, information prior to undertake this DIY project. So I recommend that you watch part one first before you start watching part two. There are a series of uh, certain procedures I will go through. So let's get on with part two. And this involves uh, a lot of work. I'm going to strip down this EQ6 mount, okay, down to its uh, bare uh, structure. But it's going to be step by step instruction, right, to give you a, a good uh, inkling of what this work involves. So if you do decide to uh, undertake this project, please feel free. Again, check out part one. All the information is there in part one, so I'm not going to go through into depth of, of those things. So what we're going to do is now, uh, again, please, please hit the like button, okay? Please support Astronomy for Beginners. Uh, hit the like button. We'll only increase the video out, uh, pushes the video out so it gets uh, noticed more online, okay? Especially in the YouTube community. Again please subscribe onto my channel hit the notifications uh, tab and this will activate any confirmation that you receive for the other parts of the of the uh, video of this project so it's very crucial that you don't miss out any of the uh, parts so if you do feel like you want to undertake this project you're not going to miss anything out so what now we're going to do is we're going to proceed onto the work and let's super tune this mount. So the first step is to remove the telescope tube and remove all the counterweights on your mount. You can in fact work on this mount when it's secured onto your pier or your tripod. The reasons why I leave left it on there, it will support your mount as you're stripping it down. You can uh, take off the actual mount head itself and work on the floor but to be honest with you I don't really like that. I like to keep things, uh, my, my work areas clean particularly when you're taking uh, gears apart and delicate components all right, and risk getting uh, dirt and grime onto the gears and plus you're taking electronic parts out which can also get easily damaged. So I like to secure my work onto the pier itself, like you just shown here. So you can work like this. The first step is we're going to lock the clutches like so, so the the RA axis is not going to rotate, and we're going to remove this side panel here using the Skywatcher cross point or Phillips screwdriver. Just be careful when you remove the last screw, the motherboard might, uh, the side cover might pop out. If it doesn't, you can use the screwdriver like this, all right, just to prise it out gently. Use a flat point and just gently prise it out. Like so. This will expose the motherboard. So as you can see, you can see the motor drives just at, at the back, okay? And you see the motherboard. Now because of the side back panel being removed, so we'll put it back on and we'll secure with just two screws.
The circuit board should be now insecure, so you can remove these two screws here. Okay, the side panel should come out. Now you've got to be careful to hold the side panel because if you lay a drop, you can damage some cables. So carefully remove remove the circuit board. Now you can get access to the couplings. So as you can see there, looks very complicated, but don't let that concern you. Right, you need to remove the power light circuit there, then the actual power circuit coupling there, then disconnect the RA and the decanation axis motor drive harness, and then disconnect the polar scope harness. And it's quite simple, I find out it's easy to remove that part first. They all just clip in one way, okay, that now allow, allows me to, once I disconnect the power and the power switch harness, okay, I can remove the side panel. Then the circuit board, again, disconnect the polar scope illuminator, disconnect the RA axis and the deck axis harness. Again, they fit one way. Okay. Now, your circuit board can now be placed in a strip tray. Ideally, you don't want to damage the component because this can be a costly uh, repair. So, to put the printed circuit board, the motherboard, place this in a polythene bag like this. Okay, and zip it up. That's the motherboard disconnected. Now, as you can see there, you can see the two motor drives. So you need to remove both the, those motors using a four millimeter Allen key. Now, as I failed to mention in my last video, you also require a 4 mil Allen key. To be honest with you, it can be a bit difficult to reach. Right? So you need quite a long Allen key. But what you should do is you should remove both these Allen screws here. I tried to remove the Allen key bolts with the Allen key. It didn't work because they're very tight. So I used a 4mm bit set right, on a screwdriver adapter so I just need a bit more torque all right? depends on your mount okay? some are very tight and some can be loose just depends obviously these are very tight so I crack these off first it can be a bit of a nightmare to remove that one at the top here right? see the top there it can be a bit of a nightmare to remove so remove the top one all right. Okay, first screw removed. Second screw removed. And then remove the motor. Okay. That is the decanation motor removed. Put the motor in the decanation strip tray so you don't get confused and mix up the parts so that's why those stripping trays or balls become very useful so now as you can see as you remove one motor you can clearly remove the other one now a lot easier using the formula allen key because I've already cracked these off remove the last bolt Okay. Okay. 
last bolt removed and then and then you can remove carefully this one's a bit of a nightmare to remove sometimes because it's quite snugged in so remove the RA axis motor put that in the RA axis stripping ball so now you can see all the electronics and other motor drives are removed it is very crucial that you remove that part first so all those parts inside there will enable you to strip out uh, the rest of the components if you don't remove that first and you start removing all the shafts in that mount you can damage your gears and your motors so please remove that first. So upon removing the decanation axis motor drive I have noticed this. Now I've stripped this before uh, this is quite clean and it's still got the fresh lithium grease which is not bad considering this has not been stripped down for four years. Now if you do strip out these motor drives you'll probably find that your motor is covered in the horrible black grease. Now the newer EQ6 and any EQ6 mounts have now got a clear transparent grease which is good however it, it's not it's not great but it's better than the black grease so as you can see I'm going to show you what I meant by the backlash and as you can see there there's quite a bit of black backlash there and don't forget these all tightened up and meshed together so as you can see there already I can see what the problem is with these gears now gears doesn't matter how precision or how well made your gears are or how engineered these gears you always get some form of backlash between spur gears it's the way they are and you can see there there's quite a bit of backlash which there's quite a bit of movement so this is the reason why I'm going to adopt for the Rowan belt modification and thanks for a lot of help from our loyal astronomy for beginners members some of the guys have done the belt modification and they told me uh, this is the reason why they changed it and I can see now and that's the reason why I'm replacing these gears for, for a different drive system Remove bottom end cap for your polar scope. So we're now at the polar scope position. We're going to remove these three screws. Okay, and then remove the retaining ring. Now, as we take a closer look, you can see if I loosen the RA axis. So as you can see, there is four of these Allen screws. You need to remove all four of these using a two mil, two millimeter Allen key crack them off remove these grub screws and then go to the last one so with those grub screws removed we just got to clean up this area because there's quite a bit of grease So using a, a rag or tissue, just remove some of the excess grease. The reasons for this is you want to remove as much of the grease so that you use, when you use your oil filter extraction tool, okay, right, you can, it's quite messy but it just depends on your mount sometimes you can have mounts that are absolutely bone dry or some that like I've done here I've repacked 
I've packed these bearings uh, with a lot of grease. So once the area is cleaned up, get your oil filter tool. And to do this, you just unscrew it and then you just got to align it to the top face. Right, and then once you tighten it up, you just tighten it, turn it, and it'll start to slack. Now, the reasons for this tool is is you don't damage uh, the com this this component, right? This retaining ring. So it may be a little bit stiff, but it's better to we're now going to remove using the three mil Allen key and we're going to remove these three scrubs grub screws that secure in the the lost Monday clamp so remove these, these can be quite tight all the grub screws removed and you can remove the, the clamp completely now use the 2.5 allen key and we're going to take off the allen bolts on the deck side okay you can just see there's it can be quite tight now if that's in the way this you can remove the clutch clamping screw okay you can remove that completely all right you just use a cross point and this should remove if that's in the way if it is it's quite simple using the Skywatcher screwdriver you can remove the clamping screw it exposes a brass square drive you can remove that completely if you wish what's behind there is like a, a rubber bunk all right that clamps the uh, counterweight shaft all right but uh, you don't have to remove that completely so now once we remove the the locking lever we'll then take off the existing grub screws some some grub screws might not come out so don't worry about that You'll get these out later. Once all four Allen bolts are loose, you can, this can be quite tight. So, you can use that oil filter extractor tool to unlock that. But, from the look of that, it's actually quite slack so I can just go yeah I can just remove the old counterweight shaft completely okay you can then you can now get out your allen key grub screws now okay and that's the counterweight shaft removed the bearing may come out now this is the uh, decoration bearing all right that might come out or drop out okay so make sure you catch that if it doesn't then leave the it alone the next step use the 2mm allen key crack off the tension scrub screw for the worm drive so you just slacken that off like so, you don't need to take that off fully. Remove the decanation lock drive, 
lever. Then remove the brass drift. Now if this is tight, then use a spanner to unlock it. So you remove it. Just be careful when you're removing that part is the, there might be a rubber bong that might come out of there. Use the 5mm Allen key and slacken the detonation four bolts. These can be quite tight. Just slacken these. Don't remove them. Okay, they're slackened. With the four bolts slackened, get your NEQ6 Rowing Engineering Special Tool. Now, the reason why I've got this out now is if you remove the shaft, you're going to have to support this plate onto the vise. But to make it a little bit easier, you can use this tool to remove these end caps. And to do that, you line up the two pins along these covers. As you can see, there's holes there. All right, you line these two pins. All right, these pins are removable. All right, so it has two functions. So you line up these pins like so in between the holes using a screwdriver like so and all you do is twist now these can be very tight or very loose just depends and then once you've cracked them you can then begin to remove the end caps this exposes the actual bearing itself in there okay what you do is remove all four of these end caps. So again, line up the, the pins along the holes, crack it off. Okay. Loosen the RA axis lock screw. Carefully just tilt to the other side. Same process. Line up the pins, like so, screwdriver, crack. Now, if you didn't have this tool, you can remove this using a punch and hammer. However, you can actually elongate these holes. So it is worth investing this tool in the first place. For circa £12, it's 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 perfect all right you're not going to damage your end caps and plus you can use this tool again so when you do a strip down for the for the next four years or so if it requires it then this tool serves a huge purpose so that's the end caps removed with no damage now as you can see, if you look closely, you can see the actual bearings are supported with a lock ring. Now these are the small bearings I mentioned in part one. These are the ones that need replacing because the, the original ones are not so great. So as part of the tune up, if you want to proceed and change these, it's well worth changing them. Again. The Rowan Engineering Special Tool serves the extra purpose. You remove those pins, okay? And what you do is you align these flat hedges there into the hole, okay? You line them up and using the screwdriver, you can then crack off. these lock screws again do the same to the other side they can be tight 
again crack them off now you can secure this onto your vise but with this top tip you can actually take all these retaining lock screws off while the mount is on situ like this on the tripod so you're using the tripod as your main support so you crack them off these are incredibly tight and that's why this tool serves this purpose all right and, you, you, and these are an absolute nightmare to remove if you try to use a drift you're going to damage these lock rings so this is where that tool is worth every penny okay that is now one of the lock rings removed and again you've got to do the same on this side okay that is the second lock ring retainer removed okay with the the bearing retainers removed we slacken the RA axis we're going to carefully rotate making sure that the bearing doesn't fall out I'm going to remove the four remaining allen bolts using the 5mm allen key they're all the same size so you can't get them mixed up okay that's them removed we can now remove the complete shaft now just be careful to grab one hand here at the back so that your bearing doesn't fall out okay that is the shaft removed as described in Astro Baby's blog please check that out if you see this seal this is a spacer washer it's very thin PTFE washer and if that's damaged then please go to the blog page and she's got a retailer a manufacturer contacts for those if this is damaged okay luckily this sleeve this spacer washer is intact okay so I'm very chuffed to bits with that so if that's damaged anyway please check out a, a blog page and order a set of these okay there is a little guide there where you can measure these spacer washers so that's the shaft removed you then unlock the RA lock lever and then with your hand here comes the other bearing so remove the bearing so this part is very tricky and this one is I'll be very careful not to damage the polar scope what you've got to try and do is you've got to remove this polar scope first now I've done several attempts of this and it's quite nerve-wracking but I think this is the hardest part of this mount is removing this polar scope now I will, luckily I'm already replacing with a modified polar scope which is the HM5 however you got to remove this polar scope first because one you don't want to get any bearing grease on the actual lens itself and secondly is because it's a fine single thread you've got to be very careful when you unscrew that because you can actually damage the thread now you can use a set of pliers like these but it's not ideal because if you use a set of pliers like these you're just going to mark and damage uh, the actual polar scope but one thing I have noticed is uh, you can use a, a ratchet strap like this okay it's like a little ratchet strap right to go all the way around and crack it off 
obviously crack it off anti-clockwise alright once it's anti-clockwise you can then begin to unscrew it now if all else fails you can use this part here okay and as you unscrew it okay make sure your grip screws are removed okay from here so you remove all those grip screws and then you put your oil filter extractor over and then all you do is you just keep turning it until you, re you remove it hopefully the big retaining block here will push out the polar scope and unthread it but you can damage the thread so you gotta be very careful so as I, I've already taken this one off okay just to show you as I remove the polar scope it's just a single fine thread right as you see there I've slightly damaged uh, this one but it's not to worry it still screws in uh, the actual shaft itself as you see it's just an internal thread inside there all right that's all it screws into but luckily I'm getting this one replaced all right and that's just merely because I was unscrewing this to push it out so that's what happens all right just to let you guys and girls know so once you've removed it it's out of the way you can then unravel it okay using your using your uh, oil filter tool okay extractor tool and just keep winding it down all right until the retainer comes all the way out at the moment this is already slackened just to show you I've, I've obviously stripped this out before and as you get to the end you just lift it out and then extract the retainer and the bearing get the 2mm allen key and as you can see there's a tensioning screw there loosen that off like so just loosen it off that's all you need to do get your 5mm allen key obviously ensure that your RA axis is locked and crack off the allen keys the four allen keys here okay crack them off got to remove those ones as well that one and there's one on the other side okay all four cracked I can then remove the thing in the water like that there you go so so obviously when you slacken the bolts from the side plate here is slacken them and then lift the whole thing like that then take the bolts out so what you should have is two major assemblies you got the main RA axis head and you got the detonation gear okay so two major assemblies now there's one thing I need to highlight is this now if you take a look at this as I mentioned before earlier on in the video there are some washers or spacers now these spacers are PTFE Teflon washers alright and there's one on this side okay you can just see it now the reason why I highlight this is I advise you to take pictures of this of these parts remember do not mix these washers right these are not the same size all right these are mated together with with this mount okay so do not mix and match these washers take a picture of these okay with your phone or whatever you got a camera okay take the pictures before you start disassembling all the other parts so again they're different size washers now the idea is to check see if they're not damaged again if they are please go to Astro Baby's uh, blog page all right and locate there's a link there to order these washers all right these are special kind of washers so if they're damaged or broken in any way 
luckily these aren't so I'll, I'm okay with that because if you put these on the wrong way around what happens is uh, your gear meshing on your worm drive for example like this one here will not intermesh correctly to the gear wheel okay so that's why those washers are there for is to make sure that the teeth on the worm drive okay the worm spindle are embedded properly within the brass gear all right so once you strip out this part here okay you can put these do not mix and match them okay so that's very crucial that you do that so I thought I'd just highlight those particular important features so I'm going to remove the four Allen bolts Okay, and then this cover should come out. So once the bolts are removed, there is a certain knack to remove the remaining parts. So the trick is, is slacken the, uh, the setting circle. Okay, there's two bolts. So slacken the setting circle screws, all right, there's two of them. Once they're settled, Place a bit of rag, all right, so you don't damage the, sp the spindle or the shaft. And what I've done is, what you do is everything should just slide out. Okay, as you can just see there, the bottom bearings just slid out. And then what I do is just a gentle tap like that. And it all just slides out. As you can see there, slides out very cleanly. All right. Again, take note of the other washer here there's another washer found there so I advise you to take pictures of that washer you should then be able to just redraw all the components in a wanna okay okay just slides out like so in a wanna again there's more washers take pictures of these washers where they're placed so another tricky part is I'm going to remove all the components out slide all the bearings the brass gears and all that in a wanna just bear in mind that I'm not going to touch that washer I'm going to grab both my hands here holding the brass gear and all that and I'm going to slide this up using the weight of the uh, head okay and I'm just going to shake it up now if it doesn't move, I just do a gentle, gentle tap on the shaft. Okay, if it doesn't go, just keep wiggling it, it will free off. Okay, it takes uh, several attempts. Now if it doesn't, then if it doesn't come off, then what you're going to have to do is hold, put this in a vise and then it should come out. Also the other way is to just gently prise everything out, slide everything out as well. Okay, let's. then this bearing comes out. Then you can just slide, use the weight or you can just use the weight and it just pops out like so. So a whole lot should pull out if so it comes out cleanly and there's the shaft and I have done it without damaging the bushing here okay so that's the whole mechanism out so we've got the RA drive we're gonna extract the second circle again if things don't seem to come out very easy just wiggle it or put this in a vise just a gentle tap Okay, and the whole mechanism come out. Bear in mind there's a grub screw here that you need to remove. Using the 2mm 
Allen key, remove the grub, scrub screw. Just enough so it all comes out. You, so that's the grub screw removed or le left in, right? Just enough for the gear to come out. Okay, this is your brass gear, and then what you do is you tap that bearing out, okay, like so. I use the vise, and I tap that out. That is now the drive, RA drive, stripped out. Then we're going to take out the spindle from the deck axis. What we do is just do a so then loosen that grub screw there, okay, like so. So you can just slide down the drive, and then you, there's your brass gear, your worm wheel is exposed. So now what you can do is take pictures of where the bush, where the bushes are. All right, very important. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take out these bearings, all right, in a wanna, take those out. So with this part is to get the, the bearings out, put this in the vise, okay, and what you're going to do is, as you can see there, I've just used my punch and I've been tapping the sides in a race, okay, the, the outer race there, you can just, just see that, that, that part there. This, this part you should be hitting here, okay? Hit that part there and it will come out. So we ha mount, put it on the vise and just keep tapping around, right, bit by bit, all right, using the hammer, okay? Just to prise this out, it will come out eventually. Same as this side, you just gotta keep playing about with it. Always keep tapping along this outer edge there. Now, I'm replacing the bearings on this anyway, so I don't care if I damage the inner race. But, however, if you don't have these bearings, then tap the outer, outer rim. If you don't, and you hit the inside rim here, you will damage your bearings. Okay, so again, you just got to keep tapping the, in, the outer rim, alright, and it will come out. Alright, ideally place it on the vise. Do not clamp the vise over the teeth. Use a rag, or something to protect the uh, the actual sh actual gear. All right, you do not want any burrs or damage on this gear. So you want to clamp it on this part. We're using the jaw protectors, and you just tap these bearings out. All right, they will come out eventually. All right, but do not. Under any circumstances, tap the inner race. If you that you will damage your bearing and you'll need replacements. Now I'm only gonna I don't really bother about that, I'm just gonna press the bearings out, okay, with gentle taps and it will come out. You can if you do have bearing uh, extractor tools, right? Use them as well. Alright, if you've got any bearing pullers, okay, use them by all means. But again, you, these are not highly pressed in, all right? They're not, all right? They do come out very easily. So, you just need to just gentle taps and they will come out eventually. But again, do not clamp the actual gear on the vise teeth because you'll damage the teeth here, all right? You will damage your bearing, bearings and gear wheel if you rush into it. So, Remember that. So that is now the NEQ6 fully disassembled. Now as you can see there, I'm just showing the importance of using strip trace. I have my decanation axes components together in this bowl and in the other bowl I have my RA axes. All together the reasons why I use these strip trays is that all these high precision parts are mated together to fit that certain way. Now if you mix all these parts and bearings and bushes, the gear wheels and all that, when you come to assemble it together it will not work right. So this is how important this is to have two balls so every time you strip down one part put it into the actual box container. 
So when you assemble it together, your mount's going to work properly. So that includes part two. So again, all the descriptions of the parts are listed below. All right, these which were featured in part one. Again, please check out part one as well. All right, reference the parts. So if you like my videos, please hit the like button. I appreciate the support. And again, please subscribe onto my channel. That is very important. Again, if you want to undertake this project, you want to be notified of the new parts coming soon. So keeps you updated so that you don't miss any uh, important parts of, uh, of my videos as I progress through my project. So please subscribe onto my channel and please hit the notifications tab. We're available from the Astronomy of Beginners Facebook group. Please join that group. Uh, there's a lot of good information from experienced astronomers and astrophotographers out there. All right, I advise you to join that group. And again, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Look forward to part three. And uh, I wish you all clear skies.